What's up everybody? Out here uh, in the office today. It's Monday, October. Uh, had, a, had a nice weekend. Went fishing actually yesterday. Pretty cool deal. I got to fish with, um, with Morgan Griffith, our congressman from this area. And his, one of his sons, Stark, went out there, had a, had a real good uh, fun day on Claytor Lake. Went up there and was able to, I'm going to mute my computer, but uh, was able to go up there and have a, have a fun day, really enjoyable. Uh, that, that trip was actually made, made possible because I donated a trip earlier this year to the uh, Junior Diabetes Research Foundation. They hold a big dinner here in Roanoke. And I was able to donate that trip and they ended up purchasing that trip for their son Stark. And uh, he's 11 years old, just the uh, same age as my daughter. Maya had a uh, neat, neat, fun time. But anyway, fall fishing in this time, this part of the country, fall fishing can be very tough, can be very tricky. Wanted to, to really talk about my day yesterday and kind of what we did, what we were looking for, and then hopefully be able to explain a few things to look for during the fall fishing period this time of year to try to make you a, help, a better fisherman, help you out make you a better fisherman this time of year as well can be real tricky i know that they had a tournament up at smith mountain lake last weekend and uh, i heard the ross ross and ross father son combo smoked the field with 20 pounds a day i don't know what they're doing i don't think anybody knows what they're doing but uh but congratulations to those guys but uh, you know g more generally this time of year can be tough fishing and on clater lake we started out uh chasing bait it was it was overcast in the morning so I figured that there would be a lot of bait fish activity in the backs of some creeks. So I ran a couple different uh, creek, you know, back ends of the creeks, creek arms that had had some bait the last few weeks. And there was some bait fish activity, but there was no schooling action going on. We had three topwater baits blasting out in every direction with the boat going on. Uh, we had a, had a walk-in bait, we had a popper, and we had a whopper popper. So we had all three covered and we covered the back end of a couple different pockets and in, in areas, and we had zero luck. We had zero luck on top water. Really surprised. So then we came out and started fishing a few main lake points that had rocks that, that went out, you know, kind of more typical top water early morning type places. Ran those, no luck. So the first two hours or so of the day, we we really didn't have any luck. We didn't have much going on, and uh, and so we just we just kept bouncing around and I had to ch change it up a little bit so we went towards the mouth of a creek and there was there was a big pocket and in that big pocket one of the banks had a, it looked like a channel swing bank up against it and these were natural banks that have uh, you know trees uh, right up along the shoreline and those trees over time you know they'll fall in along those natural shorelines well where this one creek creek bank had a, a little uh, channel swing up against it I figured that there were going to be some trees that had fallen over and they'd be over top of deeper water. And so I went up against those and I had a uh, missile baits missile bait shockwave on a on a 316 ounce head is which is a, a combo that I fish a lot for smallmouth. I fish it a lot for spotted bass and I figured that would be pretty good in the fall. So I was kind of paralleling where those logs were coming down in the water. And we were fishing along, and I caught a small smallmouth, about a 12-incher. I said, "Hmm, that, that's good." I haven't had a, I hadn't fished the the shockwave early at all. Picked up that shockwave, caught that fish, and then and then I re-angled. It turned the boat back around, made another cast back over there, hit another one of those limbs, probably 10 or 15 feet deep. Hit another one of those limbs, and then had a had bite, and the fish was right up under the boat. And I'll be honest with you, and that fish hit me up under the boat and came up. And I fought it up next to the boat, and it was so long and brown. I thought it was, I thought it was a, a walleye, and I thought that for sure I had dinner. But it was not a walleye. It was a, uh, it was a big smallmouth. It was pushing four pounds. If it wasn't four pounds, it was scaring it, scaring it to death. So that big smallmouth, I fought it around and were able to, to get it into the boat. And and so I really thought we were we were onto something, and we we ran that pattern a little bit more. Broke off a few jig heads on the on those uh, limbs. But I couldn't duplicate that that channel swing up against the bank, uh, where it was kind of there was a point, and that channel swing went right up against the edge of that point to where those limbs were overhanging. I couldn't run. I didn't. You know, we're gonna run around all day when you're, you know, trying to have some guests out on the water. But we found two or three places that were somewhat similar, 
and just didn't uh, didn't get any bites so I had to had to change that up but let me let me show you a little bit more about this uh the setup on the swim bait this is the jig head that i like it's the gamakatsu round ball head uh, 3 16 is what i throw more more than anything when i'm doing that i do throw a quarter ounce some and, and an eighth ounce some but this little this little it's just a round ball head with a double collar trailer on it and it's got a obviously a gamakatsu hook in it real sharp and you just have that little shock wave and you just want to you want to thread it on there and try to make it as straight as possible it's a little shock wave 3.5 you want to get that thing on there as straight as possible so that when you when you look down at it, you see how the hook shank and the, and the bait and everything is just dead straight that's exactly that's exactly what you want that's exactly what you want that thing to uh, to stay straight as possible. And um, the other part is I was throwing it on a spinning rod. I was throwing it on a Cashin 7.3 medium action spinning rod. And I'm gonna I've got, I'm gonna come get to some of the uh, questions. I appreciate it. I'll try to make note of those uh, on the comments coming in. I will make note of those and I'll uh, I'll try to answer those a little bit later. But I throw that on that 7.3 medium action Cashin spinning rod and. I use seven pound Sunline Sniper as my leader. So that's uh, that's that's where I like to go with that. If you go any heavier than eight pound, if you go 10 or 12 pound with this little small jig head, you're gonna start to inhibit the action because that boot tail or that little tail, it, it kicks back and forth. And what'll happen is that the, the swim bait will rock. And the heavier your line, the less that's gonna rock and it's gonna inhibit the action of the bait and this is you know a bait that's going through the middle of the water column so the more action that bait has rolling side to side the more more bites you're going to have but that that's the little swim bait um setup that i was using in order to uh, to catch that and again that's the missile baits shockwave fishalicious that was the color i tried a couple other colors and didn't have any success i don't know that it was initially uh, or necessarily tied to the color but that's that's what I was doing on the on the swim bait. So once that that swim bait deal, I'm gonna try to a handful of other areas, not no success. Then I picked up uh, old faithful over here. Picked up my drop shot rod. It's the old Cashin drop shot rod that I designed for him. It's got the little weight keeper right there. Picked that up. I found some vertical cover in old Clater Lake. Found some vertical cover. And I had the new Missile Baits bomb shot. Had the bomb shot on there and I had it, uh, and I was fishing also the Fishalicious colored bomb shot because you know, this time of year they really get keyed into the shad. But I had that, that Fishalicious bomb shot and, and the way that I have it hooked, it's the way I usually have it hooked. I don't, I don't nose hook it and just hang it right on there. I come right up from the bottom of that head and I, I stick it right through there. So the hook point is barely poking out and what that does, it helps keep your line from getting twisted. And it kind of hides the hook point a little bit. Still gives it plenty of action. But that's what we were we were fishing. And had I had the little eighth ounce. I was throwing a three sixteenths and an eighth ounce weight on there, about a foot long leader. And again, this was seven pound sniper as well on my leader. And and we were we found some vertical cover that that I had uh, knew about before. And I pitched over there and I had a bite immediately. So I, I reeled it in. And uh, young Stark threw over there, and he was able to catch uh, catch himself his first spotted bass ever, which I thought was really cool. And and he had that little spotted bass, and you could just see the smile on his face. He was really really excited, and got to show him the the uh, little tooth patch on the tongue. Thought that was uh, he thought that was pretty cool how they, how they have that on there. But so anyway, but got those on there, and was able to able to put that back. I caught a small one in um, around that that area, so we we did catch a few there. But uh, but that was the to kind of go to come through for uh, for us to be able to have start catch a catch a fish and then i ended up kind of changing gears again because that that was the only vertical cover that i knew about and this was in you know 20 to 25 feet of water it's the only thing where i knew there was anything substantial coming up off the bottom so i just kind of changed gears and started fishing uh bluffs and uh, bluff points especially ones with shade on them that's just something I've caught fish on a lot of different places I've gone just not necessarily tied to this time of year just in general it's it's good 
And the, what I was using there was uh, the, my Cashin, seven foot, medium heavy, the old go-to uh, with 14 pound Sunline shooter on here. And I had the baby D-bomb on a swing head. This thing catches fish all over the place. This is uh, this green pumpkin purple. It's a 5 16 ounce head. Just a it's a do it mold with a gamagatsu hook in it because I, I like putting a, a real good hook in there. And I started fishing. And it was the, actually only the, the first point that I pulled up to. I caught two small spotted bass on this rig, and then I moved up to the next the next point and caught about a three pound largemouth. And that was that was our uh, day. It wasn't a full eight hour day, but we we fished plenty plenty enough time. So we caught a couple a couple decent fish. Um, one you know, like I said one was on on this year, and then the other one was on that little shock wave. But uh, that was kind of our that was kind of our day yesterday. Had a lot of fun. Uh, told a lot of stories, a lot of jokes, and 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 had definitely had some good memories. But had. Uh, uh oh! Give us a sneak peek of the of the next bait. Yeah, I'll I'll get to that here in just a second. I'm gonna tell you about it. I'm not gonna show you exactly what it is, but I will I will give you an idea of what it's all about. Uh, one of the questions that I had asked earlier was about uh, which EWG style hook do you like with the D bomb. That's one of the things we did many many years ago. Uh, Shannon and I, uh, he's across the hall from me right now. We went out fishing on Smith Mountain Lake, and I would have a straight shank hook. On the D bomb, and I used I tried a five aught, a four aught, and a three aught, and we we'd, we'd catch fish on the straight shank. We had great hookups. He is a EWG kind of fisherman. He likes the EWGs, and so we tried EWG style hooks in three, four, and five aughts sizes, and we had no problems with hook sets getting getting fish hooked up because that the D bomb the bait just collapsed so well that we got really good hook penetrations. So I we I use all I got two hooks on ninety nine percent of of everything that I fish and that was uh, so that that's what we used uh, if I was using anything I would probably use a five out hook for an EWG but when I'm flipping close in close range I like that strength shank and it gets a little more digging action goes out goes out a little bit more so that was a good question we had earlier come in I appreciate that and uh, and again the D bomb can be something good to to fish around docks this time of year not necessarily we didn't do a lot of dock fishing yesterday because the docks up there require a little a uh, little crafty casting and we had uh, two relatively novice fishermen uh, we had they're definitely enthusiasts and um, and and really enjoyed uh, enjoyed the company uh, but but you know having baits being skipped up under docks was not going to be something we could we could do a whole lot so I didn't we didn't fish a whole lot around docks we fished you know made a couple casts on either side of the docks and things like that but um that's that's what we had. We had another uh, another question come in about what are the thoughts on bass is no net rule in the future. I I don't see that changing anytime soon. I think bass really really likes that. Uh, MLF has their no touching carpet rule. Uh, they don't have nets either, and in that MLF competition, and they don't have uh, you can't allow your fish to touch the carpet. Supposedly in the new Bass Pro. That tour, that's that's not going to be enforced until the final days, something something along those lines. But I like the idea of not letting your fish flop around on the carpet. I think that is very beneficial for the health of the fish and keeping that slime coat on. I highly highly recommend it. But as far as bass is concerned, uh, you know BASS that is uh, in bass competition. I love the no net rule because it. I feel like I land as higher of a percentage as I could with a net. Because you fight the fish differently, you 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 take your time reeling the fish in, and you really evaluate what's going on as far as the, where the hook is and where it's where it's placed. So uh, that's kind of the you know what I do with that, and especially on a spinning rod, lighter line. I mean, you just take your time. You don't get in a don't get in a big uh, big hurry, and all of a sudden, you know everything uh, everything goes well if you're not in a big hurry. That's why you never lose fish in practice, is because you don't rush them to get in the boat but in the tournament you rush the fish you can try to get them to the boat quicker and the fish are real green and they're jumping real hard and they just come off so a lot of times those fish in tournaments come off because you get them to the boat much quicker than you do in practice and that's a big difference in why you lose fish in the tournaments and not so much in practice that's my opinion but uh, another question that came in earlier was about our new bait 
and I'm gonna see if I can find it. I'll give you like a little snip bit. Little teeny tiny. Now, I'll just tell you this much. We just came out with a drop shot bait, the bomb shot, showed it just a minute ago. The drop shot, the bomb shot is, is really good. I've caught a ton of fish on that thing already. Finesse Fisherman, we're gonna give you another one. I'll give you one little quick snippet. There it is. That's all you're gonna get. Uh, if you like to Ned rig, even if you've never tried the Ned rig, we're gonna educate you on how to fish the Ned rig and we're gonna give you one of the best Ned rig baits that you can, you can imagine. We had a handful of these samples poured up and I'll just tell you this much. I sent three baits to Ned himself, Ned Cady, I sent three baits to him directly. He went out last weekend and he uh, he caught 23 bass in one day on uh, two baits. He caught 20 bass on one bait and then that bait finally got uh, the sample that finally tore off and then he caught three more on the other bait. And so I gave him three, so he should be able to get about another day, day and a half of fishing in the way he does it. But man, that guy has the, the Ned Rig obviously dialed in. And he does not call it the Ned Rig because it'd be kind of weird, I guess, to call it your own, call it your own rig. It'd be kind of weird, but he uh, he calls it the Midwest Finesse Rig. And uh, that's the that's the official name. So we're gonna, we're gonna stick with that as it comes out, but be prepared for uh, for finesse fishing it's going to be this new bait's going to be a classic release bassmaster classic so keep an eye out for that uh we're going to we're going to let some stuff fly after the first of the year as far as showing the bait a little bit and, and maybe a few few teasers but uh, be prepared to get that thing at the bassmaster classic and uh, we'll have we'll be sell selling it to retailers about that time as well um so i had one other one other question i just went away before i could uh before i could read it but uh Anybody, anybody has any more questions real quick, uh, I'll, I'll be sure to answer them. If not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up here in just a few minutes and be sure to, to, uh, to take in. Oh, we got five inch, five inch D-bomb, the super D-bomb. Let's just say that there could be a chance that that's already been on paper. That, that I already have a drawing of a, of a super D-bomb. It looks really good, but man, we've got, I've got a bunch of baits on drawings that are in the pipeline to come out in the next uh, next few years and we just got to figure out what we're going to come out with and when we're going to come out with it that is that is definitely in the plans at some point in time i don't know exactly when when that's going to happen but we have one have one right now for sure got a got it one one more quick question from uh, from bruce what's up bruce asking what are the best baits to fish with right now best crankbaits that is this is crankbait season this is a great time to fish crankbaits i didn't fish crankbaits yesterday especially three boats uh, three three people in the boat uh it being that some of the other anglers were not as experienced as as i am been a little bit harder to to keep the boat positioned really well that's a big key with crankbait fishing shallow or deep is boat position so we did a little more relaxing fishing and fished a little bit slower and we had, a, like I said, we had a great time, caught some fish, but the, the two crankbaits that I would throw this time of the year are the same ones that I threw about a week ago when we were up at Lake Anna shooting the Fishing University. We used a Little John MD in a new color that was, that was really, really good looking that uh, it's called Homemade Shad. It'll be out next spring, but any kind of a shad, flashy color is really good on that MD. Also, the uh, the baby fat john that baby fat john it hunts it runs about two feet deep and almost all the fish we caught on that were not when that bait was hitting the bottom a couple of them were when the bait was hitting a tree branch but those fish come up and eat that that baby fat john better than about any other shallow running square bill like that i've ever fished like i said it runs only about two feet deep and that thing hunts real hard I'm, it runs about a foot either way from center as you're reeling it in and it has that same vibration that most square bills does but it has that that weird hunting action man it, it really veers left and right and i think that's what causes those fish to come up and eat that thing especially this time of year so baby fat john and the little john md that's my one-two punch this time of year it's really really hard to beat yeah i had another question coming in uh, chrome olive yep chrome olive is, is really good that time of year i started out with the chrome olive when we went up there to uh to lake anna but 
for some reason I switched over to that homemade shad. I wanted a little more flash, and that thing would uh, that thing was lighting them up. Caught caught a few good ones on it, but uh, but yeah, it should be uh, should be good. Uh, I got another question real quick. Probably the last question. Any he was asking about D bombs. He likes the uh, GP three color. Wanted something with a little more pink in it for the smallmouth up north. Dude, you need to check out the color we already have. It's called Pink Belly. It's got a green pumpkin and purple back with a blue vein in the middle, and it's got the pink, just like our Pinkalicious belly on it. We call it Pink Belly, and that thing is red hot. I won't tell you who has incorporated it into their, their top five colors, I would say, but uh, I know of one um, tour angler, let's say, that that has incorporated that color into their uh, into their arsenal and has caught a bunch of fish on it already. But um, so keep, check out that D bomb in pink belly available at, at obviously uh, Tackle Warehouse, Bass Pro Shops, and and all of our other awesome retailers. We've got a ton of independents all over the country from coast to coast. Not sure exactly where you were, but uh, appreciate it, man. Uh, yep. Yeah, I see you there. Good, good, good. Yeah, so check that out. But anyway, everybody, thank you for tuning in to the, uh, to the live feed today. We're going to be messing around and doing some more live feeds. Uh, I really enjoy the feedback and the, and the uh, interaction with, with people. So stay tuned, and we will see you very soon. Thank you. If I can figure out how to cut this thing off. <laughs>